we're going through these big, huge mountains where we're ambushed. Hadn't slept in a couple of days. I know how I no longer have any bullets, and I'm on my belly trying to figure out where what dead body I can crawl to to find bullets. Like it was that kind of bad time. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be on the United States Special Forces uh, team and what it takes to be selected? Well, this is Tim Kennedy talking exactly about the Q course in detail. So this is your first detailed look at what the Q course actually is from Tim Kennedy. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Mullenrush.com where you can now buy the Rise and Grind t-shirts um, and the Hardest Worker in the t-shirts and the new book. It's all linked down below that makes this possible. It means we can fly out to interview people like Tim. But before that, who is interested in finding out exactly what it takes to qualify for the Special Forces and what the Special Forces Q course actually is? This is Tim Kennedy on that. I'm your host, Jordan Mulligan. Let's jump into the video. So I had two very different experiences in war uh, in my first two deployments. The contrast could not be more significant. When Special Forces, the training and selection process is arduous, it is horrible. If you have 400 people that go to a selection class, you'll maybe get 25 that gets selected to go to a year and a half of training. And then once they go to that year and a half of training, you probably lose about another 50%. So in the volume of bodies, like if you just start, like if you take a thousand people, you're gonna end up with 50 to 75 Green Berets. And the thousand people that show up, these are, these are infantrymen, these are like the, they're triple volunteers. Like they volunteer to be in the military, they volunteer to go into combat arms, and they volunteer to go to selection. So these are like the who's who of, in the military, of people that want to become a Green Beret. And even of that population, you end up with just this tiny little group. So after the year and a half, the Q course, the Q course is broken up into phases. So once you're selected at the Special Forces Selection course, you then go to the Q course, which is the qualifying course. It's a year to a year and a half of learning how to shoot, move, communicate, and medicate, and then how to be a teammate and a member and understanding unconventional warfare, guerrilla warfare, and how to train uh, the people that we go overseas to train with. When I made it to the Special Forces ODA, I got um, fortunate to go to a special unit within special operations. And um, that first deployment was to Iraq and we were part of a task force that was hunting Zarqawi, who was the number one bad guy in Iraq and the number two bad guy on the planet behind Bin Laden. And um, the men that I, the men and women that we, that we were with, they are absolute hammers. I mean, these are like the best and brightest on the planet. And then there's this hairy handed troll, me, that did not deserve to be there in any way, shape or form. You know, we had 200 and something combat operations in this deployment as we're hunting this guy, Zarqawi, and none of us got hurt. No, I mean, it was just like overwhelming power of expertise and professionalism. And when you look at special missions units, like, you know, the SEAL Team 6 and Delta Force, um, when all of those efforts are pointed at a singular entity, like that, that focus, that, and the, all the modalities that they've perfected, like all of that energy is like acute to this tiny little, uh, point is nothing can stop it. And that, that's, that's what I was part of the first deployment. It's pretty rad to be part of that. The next deployment, it's me and my sniper partner going to Afghanistan to be part of a, we, we were USASOC snipers, US Special Operations Command snipers. And we weren't there with a team. We were just two snipers that were gonna go support all of our coalition partners. So we have Czech, the French, the British, all their special operations, uh, you know, the, the SAS or the Canadian Special Forces, each of those units as they would go out, we would be this like uplift, like a bolt-on extra thing. So if, uh, you know, 30 Canadian Special Forces guys were gonna go out to do this operation, they would get two American Special Forces snipers to support that operation. One, we could, snipers not, are not just shooters, they're, they're an extra set of eyes for the commander. So we would be relaying back to American command, like what was happening on the ground. So sometimes there were accent problems uh, or like just language differences. Um, even though everybody's speaking English, like words can mean different things and words really matter in, in war. My partner, um, when he got on the ground, he found out that his wife had been waiting for him to leave. 
and she had drained their bank accounts and was selling all their stuff. So uh, when he got there, his life is kind of a wreck. So they pull him off and I end up by myself. Um, so I start doing all these missions with all these different coalition partners as a lone American. So I'm with, I go to Erzgan with the Czech Special Forces and while we're there, we get blown up in an ambush that turns into a three-day gunfight where we're able to fight our way to Firebase Anaconda, which is a pretty fa famous firebase because it was overrun by the Taliban multiple times. And uh, while we're there as a sniper, I mean, it is just, it is war. And, and war is the worst things that human can, humans can do to other humans. And um, like there's a, there's a moment where I'm like covered in my, my own sh because we got blown up and I got overpressure. It's like, like brain injury. We're at altitude because we're trying to, we're going through these big, huge mountains where we're ambushed. Hadn't slept in a couple of days. I know how, I no longer have any bullets and I'm on my belly trying to figure out where, what dead body I can crawl to, to find bullets. Like it was that kind of bad time. So very different experiences in war. Um, the Taliban, just as brutal as Al Qaeda, um, but in the rural, um, austere environments of Afghanistan, that brutality is, is extra horrific. Oh, it's just a weird acute. You know, they um, throw an acid on little girls because they didn't think girls should go to school. Um, you know, the torture was normal to the Taliban as, as a way to show that they owned a village. Um, and that was, so Afghanistan and Iraq for me were very different things. Um, and those were my first two trips overseas to war in special forces. Very different. You know, every, every human is a collection of their experiences, right? Their perspective and their biases and their, their opinions. Those are all shaped by the things that they've done in their life and those experiences. Um, and one of the many reasons why I love the military and love the veteran community is because their experiences are unique. You know, we're talking about less than 1% of society serves in the military and way less than that in combat arms. Um, you know, where you saw my friend Toby walk up and I was like, it's, it's an embrace and somebody that I haven't seen in six months. And, but we have something, we have a connection there. And that connection is service, you know, an, an, entry, an infantryman that literally like had to fight a dude with a tomahawk. Um, and uh, so we could not see each other for 10 years and I'll still like hug him like my best friend in the world. Um, it changes you, not for the better, not for the worse. Just, it's a change, it's a lens, it's a, it's like a filter that I wish I could look at the, the world through rose colored lenses, but now it's just always tarnished and blurry because I know what a human can do to another human. And that's a pretty terrible thing. Thank you so much to Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy's book is out now. The link in the description will lead you to his website to be able to purchase the book. Um, and also, yeah, just thank you to Tim in general. C great guy. He's out in Ukraine at the moment. I know he's doing some work out there and, uh, He's a really, really inspiring dude. So maybe go follow him on Instagram as well. Um, today's video was sponsored by mulliganverse.com. The new gym line is out where you can get the Rise and Grind t-shirts, the Hardest Work in the Room t-shirts, um, all that kind of good stuff. I, I'm so happy with how these t-shirts came out. I'm so happy with how the clothing brand has been supported by you guys. It makes this possible. It is the business that runs alongside uh, the YouTube channel that makes us be able to fly out to film Tim Kennedy. So your support has made this possible. So thank you so much for all of that. Um, if you want to see what I get up to and see how I rise and grind and get these big biceps, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> go follow me on Instagram at Jordan Mulligan River. You can see all my training, my, the, the work that I do behind the scenes, my filmmaking, my business stuff is all on my Instagram. So go follow me on there, guys. Say hello. Uh, some people have been saying hello recently, so thank you so much. So you are, are coming through to say hello, so I appreciate it. And have a blessed and productive day. Thank you to the legend that is Tim Kennedy, and go inspire some change. I will see you in the next one. Peace.